This is a tutorial of using the Teaching Pyramid Observation Tool Data Entry Workbook. When you first open the workbook, you must accept the macros or enable the macros. Usually it asks you either as a pop-up or as a ribbon at the top. It'll just say, do you want to enable macros or something like that at the top? And then you would go ahead and click on that enable. The enable makes sure that the spreadsheet works the way that it's intended. When you open the spreadsheet, you will have different tabs at the bottom. You'll have an instruction tab, customizations, teapot data entry, individual summary, a program summary, and a fidelity tab. If you don't see that, it could be that this bar is covering those up. So if you go to those three little dots, you'll see a double headed arrow. So that's down here. So you would hold down your mouse button. So you might have this like that. And so you just hold down your left mouse button and then you would just move that over so that you can see all of the tabs so that instruction tabs has my name and it has my email it also has which version it is and when it was created and then if you scroll down it just has some simple instructions about what you will be entering into the spreadsheet so for the data entry and then the red flags and challenging behavior and that's all on the data entry tab the next tab is the customizations tab. So this customization tab, you want to make sure that you agree ahead of time about what these customizations will be. And so the first one is a common administration period. And so that really helps you to sort and look at your data by a common date or a time range. Um, we know that, you know, usually you might have a, you might do teapots in the fall. It could be September, October, it could be September and October. You might do them again in the spring, it might be April and May. So instead of using a date, because let's say we wanna look at that fall administration period and see all of the teapot data for the fall, regardless of what month it was, that's why we then have these common administration periods. And so it's up to the leadership team to decide or your data coordinator to decide what you want these dates to be so it can either be something like fall with the year spring in the year it can be teapot one teapot two teapot three it could be um whatever you want it to be it could be a range of months so it could be august through october november through january it could be by quarter so it can be anything that you want it to be but whatever it is you're going to type that in here and then when you go to actually do the data entry that this will be what will drop down and it'll tell you is this fall 2021 is it spring 2022 what is it so you want to make sure you have that in here first before you do data entry then you have optional fields so you have a cohort field so the cohort just a group of teachers that might be receiving coaching across a shared time interval so maybe you want to use cohort because you want to look at your data by cohort so you have the option to do that coach ID. So you might have um, different teachers. You might have all your teachers in one teapot spreadsheet, but they're being coached by different practitioner coaches. And so you might want to have a coach ID so that you can pull out all the teachers that um, are being coached by a specific coach. Then a program type. So maybe at the program level, you have different um, types of centers or classrooms or something so it's just a unique kind of category that maybe there's another way that you want to look at teachers um, and so or teapot scores and so that's that program type <clears throat> you don't have to use these optional fields mom they're optional but you can if you want to so then the teapot data entry so when you're ready you're finally ready to enter data each row is one teapot administration so i would put in in here in this case my program id is a 101 my teacher id is 101 t01 so this is telling me this is teacher one that teacher is in cohort one the coach id is c01 the program type is it's an early head start or whatever that you know whatever it is that you're putting there and again you can leave it blank if you want to you would enter the date of the actual teapot and then here's that common administration period. So if I click on that down arrow, I'll see those three choices that I entered in the customizations tab. 
I'll see those here. So I'll see fall, spring, and fall. And I know this is from fall 2021. And then now what you're entering here is how many yeses and how many noes. So um, there's an NCPMI TPOP version spreadsheet that you're entering each indicator one by one, whether it was a yes or no. But in this case, you're only entering um, how many, how many yeses, how many indicators were scored a yes, and how many indicators were scored a no, how many were, in, you know, yes, and how many were no. And so you would just, you'd have that on your paper form where you're tallying up how many yes and how many no, and then you would just enter those here. And then if you scroll all the way down at the end, red flags is the same. How many red flags were scored yes, and how many red flags were scored no. And then for challenging behavior, item number 32, what was your final score? Was it a no, was it a yes, or was it no incidents observed? So that's what you would do is your, that final score and how many incidents were observed. So um, here there's, it was a score to no, and there was one incident. Here it was a score to yes. There were two incidents, no incidents. So observe, so it's zero incidents. So that's what you would put in here. So once you've entered your data, now you can look at individual teacher teapot data. And so the first thing you need to do, there's a note here to refresh your data. So there's two ways to do this. You can go up to the data tab and click refresh all, or you can click on this table and then you'll have a new tab, pivot table analyze. And then you'd come here to this refresh, click on the little down arrow and click refresh all. And so that's um, two ways to do it. And then control alt F5 on your keyboard. So three ways. So when you first look at your data, it's going to look like this. It's going to have a blank column and then it's going to show your teacher ID, any data they have by that common administration period, and then the, uh, any other teacher IDs that you have. But this individual tab is really to look at individual teachers. So if you would just click on one teacher, so we only want to look at teacher one, and then it shows you for the fall, this is the percentage, and this is the percentage for the spring. And then if we look we scroll down we get that same chart that tells you the percent of indicators observed for each of those practices so um, it does have data labels and then it, you can see that and then it has the names of the um, of those key practices down at the bottom and then an average across key practices and then with this chart you can kind of do whatever you know works for you if you want to change these labels so that they are um, they're going in a different direction, you can. There's lots of different things that you can do. If you go up to design and then add chart elements, you can change, you know, um, you can name the axes, you can change the title, you can choose to take off the data labels, um, whatever it is that you wanna do, you can do that. And then as you scroll down, you have red flags. And so then it tells you, it gives you the administration period so fall, spring, whatever data they have, and then how many red flags did they have? So for fall, they didn't have any, and then for spring, they had one red flag. And then it charts it here so that you see, okay, well, there's one red flag in the spring, but there weren't any for the fall. And then as you scroll down, then you have the challenging behavior. So for that teacher in the fall, there was one incident observed. In the spring, there were two, and then um, all essential strategies were used, you know, the yes score, uh, it's a, it was scored a yes in the spring, but not in the fall. And we can see that that no score was actually in the fall. So the one means yes, and the zero means no. So if you see that one, then you know that, okay, well, for the spring, um, it was scored a yes. And then for the fall, it was scored a no, and then no incidents observed that's um these zeros be like that means no um there were incidents and we see that up here so then it just gives you a summary so for this teacher total number of incidents were three the total all essential strategies used the total times you scored it a yes one and the total times that you scored that a no that item a no is once and then um there wasn't there weren't any incident inc instances of no incidents. 
So that's the little summary here. So that's what you have for the individual teacher summary. And then you can click on another teacher and then you would get their data. Now you have the program summary. So this is for all of the teachers that are in this workbook. So in this workbook, it'll summarize all of those teachers by whatever administration period you have. So every teacher who has a fall score would be average tier. Every teacher that has a spring score would be average tier. And then you would get your bar graph that shows you that data. Uh, the red flags. So for fall and spring, total red flags across all teachers. You'll have your chart. And that's what you have there. So you have these here, these filters here that you can look at. So if I would have had more than one cohort, I could click and say, okay, well, I only want to look at cohort two. And then it'll give me the average across teachers in that cohort. And then the graphs. If I had multiple coaches, it would show me all the coach IDs here where I could then click on specific coaches to look at. If I had different program types, I would be able to click that as well and look at scores by program type. And then if I only wanted to look at one common administration period, I only want to look at fall scores, then you can click that. I only want to look at spring scores and go back to your default view. Um, that's clearing your filter here. So the, you know, once you, you know, each coach can have their own spreadsheet. And then if you are the data coordinator and you're, you want to have everyone's scores on one spreadsheet, you could just copy all that data and paste it into the data entry tab. Except when you paste it, you don't just control V or just click on paste. You want to make sure that you're pasting it using um, a very specific, um, type of paste. So if I hit copy, it's this here. It's the key, it's the little clipboard with the one, two, three, and that'll make sure it only pastes the values and it doesn't reference your other spreadsheet. Because then if that spreadsheet moves location, then that connection will be lost. So just make sure that if you're combining coaches spreadsheets into one spreadsheet, that you're using that paste with that little clipboard. So program summary, and then the last tab is the fidelity tab. And basically this tab just gives you all your teachers. So here are my two teachers, the two times that they have, that this teacher has their teapots, their average across key practices, how many red flags, and then it gives me across both of those administration periods. This was their average score and their total number of red flags. And then I have a teacher here with, um, one fall score, no red flags, and then it averages for my program, you know, across all my teachers, you know, our average across key practices is a 93% with one red flag. And then it charts that over here by teacher ID. And then again, you can choose to just select one teacher or select any of these, you know, just I want to look at spring, I only want to look at fall, etc. So it gives you that choice here. To look at that as well and then if with any of these you have this blank option here so anytime you're you're sharing data you want to remove that because that's not really um, helpful you go up to this multi-select and you just click on that blank to get it out of the way and that way it cleans up all your charts and all your tables so if you have any questions as you're using it or you um, something doesn't seem to be working quite right Again, on the instruction tab is my email. Uh, feel free to email me and we can definitely troubleshoot and figure out what's going on.